Hello, it's me, Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f and I am underwater. <laughs> you know, something like that. <laughs> I mean, like, figuratively, not so literally, but, you know, I thought the background was appropriate. Right now, I'm just showing you a video of my actual P2 laser, and I'm just cutting the acrylic that I'm going to be using in this art project today. I'm not going to be doing the whole talking through the whole video thing, because I talked through the whole video, and I thought that that was enough. But I just wanted to pop in, show you my face, remember who I am. I'm still here. I'm still alive. And that I hope you're all well. If you see fit, please give me a like, give me a subscribe. But if you don't, I get that too. <laughs> I'm gonna stop being awkward now. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hello, friends. It's me, Raina. Haven't seen you in a while, but I am going to show you the new Piggies After Dark line. These are glow-in-the-dark shimmer pigments that I'm going to mix in resin and doll up this laser-cut faux-stained glass frame. I'm not going to start with the Piggies After Dark. This will be last, you know, save the best for last. So I'll talk about this real quick. This is two pieces of acrylic. I've got a black piece where you can see the masking came off a little bit and it is fastened to a piece of thin clear acrylic. And I just now realized I used the wrong thickness and that's probably why I had such a hard time with it. Um, that's Sefi, Persephone. I've just got a piece of paper taped to the back of this and I colored in the sections that I want to be the blue sky just so I wouldn't get too confused. So that's where I'm going to start with. Then I'll go to the moon and then after that we'll get into the piggies. All right, for my night sky I'm going to use my very, one of my very favorites, one of the original TLPs, sapphire. Gorgeous sapphire blue. And I'm doing this with UV resin. Why? Because I'm tired. Here's some stuff. Uh, I think the star is like kind of effect defective. It doesn't work real great. I have to like bake it for, you know, 30 minutes for it to set. Um, so I'm just gonna do this with the bottom layer and then I have like some brand new UV resin to put over the top, hopefully to like cure it. But this is just like the base layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mix it and pour it into this like ounce cup of thingamabob. I don't wanna like overdo it because I'm working straight on my desk like a dumbass. Very likely I'm going to spill something. Um, thankfully, I think I've got like a couple of pieces of scrap paper here. Move my piggies, my midnight piggies. Open my sapphire. I'm not gonna use too much. That's actually probably an obscene amount just for that little ounce cup, but I want it kind of nice saturated. Put it in, mix her up. I'm gonna fast forward this part. It's intensely boring to watch somebody mix pigments into resin. It's very basic. Literally just do it until you don't see clumps anymore. This color is always just so exciting to me when I haven't seen it in a while. It's just so beautiful. I could potentially, you know, lay a thicker layer of this resin, but like I said, this batch is like kind of defective or something. So I, I tried that before and I just, <laughs> whew, it did not work at all. It caused great big bubbles. So now I know to just do it very thin because UV resin is so expensive. I don't want to just like throw the bottle away. Like I can make it work. It's just not great. So I figure base layer is about all it's good for at this point. At this point, you may be asking, why didn't I just use real, normal two-part epoxy resin? Again, it's because I'm tired and I'm lazy. Well, I'm not really lazy. I, I work 100-hour weeks. I'm very tired. So UV resin, um, super easy. I don't have to mix anything. It's like intensely easy to work with. It's stinkier. I have my window open. So this is a, a stained glass pattern that I got off of Etsy and I converted it because it, it came as a PDF so I had to convert it to a vector file so I could cut it on my laser. 
because I really like doing this faux stained glass. You know, it looks like stained glass, but it is just acrylic and resin. I would love to learn stained glass. It doesn't actually look all that involved. I'm worried about getting carpal tunnel. <laughs> I'm like a true artist. Wow, it's cool stuff. All right, so got my blue. At least now I know where that is all going. So now I think I will mix up moon color, moon and star. All right, so for my moon, I'm gonna use some abalone, TLP. Okay. Just gonna use about that much abalone. I like abalone, it's a little blue and a little gold, depending on the color that you look at it. Not exactly your typical moon color, but I'm not your typical girl. Now I'm going to add some glitter. This is the recollections that you get at Michael's. It's going to be a very magical moon. And some ultra fine Hemway Ultra Sparkle Glitter. It's like a white with a little bit of a green gold flash. I'm using an obscene amount because I want my moon to be obscenely sparkly. And the beauty is, if I decide that it's too blue, I can always put a layer of white on top of it. At this point, I am going to put my black light over this and let it cure for the first round. So that's cured. I've got five little containers here, part of my mess. I'm just not like very tidy. And we are going to mix in some Piggies After Dark and fill in these clouds for the next step. I'm gonna start with Flirty. They're so new, they still have their safety seals on them. That's always fun. Okay, that looks lovely, very sparkly. Don't need too much. Particles are definitely bigger. I'm just using very small amounts of UV resin here because I can layer up. I'd rather work in layers than just pour it all at the same time. Next I'm picking up Seductive. This looks like it's got some blue in it. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. This is obviously my first time using them, so. These will make for awesome clouds. I am seduced. Oh, you know, I'm looking at the labels and that one looks, this must be the teal one. And green, so here we're going to pink. Provocative. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Great, my cats have the zoomies. It's 1222 in the morning. I'm not tired, I should be. But I figured instead I would do this. I'm gonna try to sleep. This is our blue, naughty. I am being naughty being up past midnight on a work night. It's got some nice shimmer in it. Pretty blue sparkles. And the last is an orange ravishing. So I've got nine clouds in five colors. This cloud is exceptionally big, so I think I'll join two colors there. Since I have to treat that one a little bit differently, that is where I will start. So I think I will use the teal and so seductive and the blue that I just mixed. So that's gonna be teal. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna be beautiful. Look at that, dang. And here's the blue. So I didn't realize these are like clear, clear, clear. That's cool, but I didn't know that. So I'm gonna have to think about I'm gonna do this and make my clouds like more cloud colored. Black chalk cats. I got my teal blue right there. So here I've got, now I should have made a map for this, but I didn't. So I'm just doing the fly by the seat of my pants at the moment. I use a little bit of alcohol to clean that up. That's one of the nice things about UV resin. I feel like I don't have enough blue powder in here. 
Like everything else looks way shimmery. Shim shimmery. And of course I always risk overdoing it, but I'd rather probably overdo it than underdo it. Subtlety is not my middle name. There we go, that helps. Where do we want to go next? I'm like I want to blend this with some orange. Do not green down here. That that was driving you crazy. So it was kind of driving me crazy. <laughs> Let this just melt for a moment and then I will cure this. And then we'll finish it off in round three, I think. That might be round four. We'll see. I've got to see it before I know what color to paint the uh, frame. Okay, I lied. So um, I'm going to turn off my room lights. Not completely. Bring in my black light. They should charge as I'm curing. Look at that overhead light. Yeah, while I'm doing that, you can certainly like see the colors glow. Probably hard to catch that on camera. Yeah, I mean, they were really glowing in here. Oh, you can kind of see it starting to charge. Total blackness. Ooh, cool. Okay. We're cured. It looks pretty good. However, I feel like the green flirty is a little bit too transparent. So I'm going to make a little bit more and re-pour it and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of glisten just to give it a bit of a pasty, even though technically these ones are, um, uh, Raina, what is the freaking word? Uh, translucent, transparent, yeah, translucent. Jeez, it's been a long day. It really hasn't, but like, I don't know, my brain thinks so. Oh, I should probably put my resin in there first. So I'm going to <laughs> just put a little bit of resin, UV resin again, I'm using, in case you missed that the first time or like the 20th time that I said that. Not trying to be a smart ass, just, you know. I have ADHD, I don't always listen. I'm sure some of my audience is exactly the same. Brand new thing of resin. Hopefully this works better than the last that I had. So I'm going to add in my glisten. And then I'm going to add in my flirty. A little heavy handed, but of all of them, that seems to be the clearest. And when I put it up in my window, it just looked too clear. I don't mind if the clouds look a little white and only like somewhat colored, but this is just, it's just too much. And as much as I like the way the moon and the star turned out, I'm going to put a little bit of this over them too. So they also glow because I did not put any glow powder in the moon or star. While that's doing its thing, I'm going to mix up a little bit more blue because my blue is slightly too transparent. I think it would just look better a bit more. And for the border, I want to do kind of a stone look. So I'm going to use Storm. And just because I'm me, I'm going to throw in a tiny bit of Silver Holographic Ultra Fine Glitter. I don't know how many of you are Akatar fans, A Court of Thorns and Roses, but I just realized I probably picked this because I just got done reading that whole series and this must have like subconsciously reminded me of the Night Court. So if you're an Akatar fan, <laughs> raise your hand. I feel like this is maybe something Pharaoh would put up in, in the Riverside house, you know, in Valaris. And it's just breaking bubbles. These bubbles like to form around the edges. All right, time to fry this. All right, time to peel the masking. And this is just paper that's like fastened to the acrylic to protect it. I like to leave it on. So the acrylic stays pretty pristine. I'm hoping this is a quick demask that I've had somewhere 
traditional resin hardened and it was like nearly impossible to get off. But this came off pretty easy. So now I'm going to charge it for a little bit. Time to start turning off lights. Oh wow, that looks really cool. I could have probably mixed the pink a little stronger because it's really strong looking here in the jar. Um, at least the part that was charged. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I can't wait to play with these more.